This is a tutorial on how to do stickers for Giphy and other sites that are actually GIF animations with an alpha transparency. So let's take a look real quick. We go over here, what we're looking at. Let's look at our stickers here. So it's basically a GIF with the transparency, as I said. You can tell it more obviously when you see the edges of things here. They're kind of gritty. They look a little bit old school. And that edge is something that's very prevalent on many of these GIFs because many people don't know how to do them right. So let's look at this, for example. Let's see if anything comes up. Nothing comes up, but I'm going to look at my profile and the gifts that I made. So here's the finished one I did. Now, if you look at the edge on this, it's pretty good. There's a lot less grain on the sides, but it took a lot of work. So that's about, I think, 20 frames. So it's pretty big. But I did make a local version, just an example, where one would be, I think, 300 kilobytes, and the other one's 3 megs. So that's 300 verses. So that's the giant ones, all different backgrounds. You can see there's a little bit of Navi's edge. And the reason for that is that his jacket is a medium brown. Grayscale, let's say. It's a medium gray. But on the edges, he was in a white room. And I'll show you how that was done. Now, in his room, I have this shot on his girlfriend's phone. Now you can see on the edge that there's a lot of shadows. There's a lot of things going on, but it's lighter. Now what you don't realize, because what your eye sees is dark and light, is that the very edge of this is reflecting this whitish light, as you can see in this triangle right here in the jacket. All of that is this color bouncing off of here. That's because there's a, re there's a restricted space in the room. So usually in a green screen, if there was an, a real green in the background or a blue, it would be a person moved forward about mm, six feet. But when you're really close against the wall, it bounces. Kind of like when you put a buttercup under your chin, you see the yellow reflection. The same thing. But see, what happens is in a white background or white-ish background, that's RGB, all the colors together that the camera sees. It's reflecting in so many places you don't realize similar colors. So when it's done, at first, it's going to look like this if we bring it in. I'll show you. Let's bring that video in to a program similar to, say, After Effects. Drop it in. Then we can take a look. So here's the project. We'll make one of those, get rid of the render queue, and we'll bring this up. Let's take a look at what we can create with this. So if I make a quick composition from this, we can see there he is. Now I want to use some type of alpha keying, but the problem is it's just not a color that's not in there. So we're going to do a keying in here, and I'll show you a key light that's built in. Problem is if you ch if you choose this color, any of those colors, it's in almost everything. That color is almost everywhere that you could imagine. You just don't notice it. Even if you play around with like the mats, the inside, outside mask and stuff like that, it doesn't matter. Uh, the screen gain itself shows you where it starts to fall apart. Right about, say here, it just doesn't work. And you can see the radial blur of the light that's hitting him, causing that problem. Now, what if we use a more artificially intelligent plugin? Like say, here, let's use the Primat Studio. Now with Primat Studio, it's a little more edge finding, let's say. And that's pretty cool because it helps a lot in situations like this, where obviously this color is everywhere here. That's why you would use a green for a blue and brown or a blue background if he was wearing a green shirt, etc. All right, so there's a lot of settings over here and there's a little drop box that they're putting into this now. So let's either go by point to select the background itself. So we could actually go here and say, this is the background. This whole line of light and dark that I'm hitting, 
Let's get rid of that. It does an okay job. Really messes up in his face, and it's got the same kind of problems. And you can see the compression in the video, even though this is high quality video. It's nowhere near the quality that's needed for green screen or any type of chroma key. So instead of a point, let's do a rectangle. Still's got serious problems, you know? Then we can clean the foreground. Let's clean the background up. It's doing a little bit of a better job, right? Now it's got some little strays here and there or whatever, but now let's clean the foreground. That jacket, some of his face, his cheek. But these are all colors that are actually in the background itself because it's a almost a flesh colored with the yellow tungsten light he has background. So it's really hard to not hit that. So that's pretty much, I mean, you could play around with the spill sponge and clean the foreground as much as you want, but we've kind of hit the limits for this artificially intelligent kind of green screen add-on. It's all we can really do. And there's speckles. If I zoom in, you'll notice that there's parts that messed up. So let's do something here. Let's make a new background, a new solid color. We can make it red. We can make it crazy green. Now let's take a look. If we put that behind or underneath the layer, what we're actually seeing. So there you go. A couple of things. We don't really care about the corner because he's not there. So when this moves around and this kind of thing happens on the side, right? Let's take a look at that on the side. Right about here. We don't care about that. So let's go back to this layer. And we will create a new mask. And then on that mask, we're going to add a couple points. Let's just add one point for now. And then pull this point down. Now, if I just did that, there might be a point where the animated noise from the radius of the light peeks in and out. So what you can do is you can open up this layer and you can tell it that there's a feather of pixels. What that means is if you see a pixel here, if I zoomed in real close, that's one pixel. Actually, it's two pixels, one by one, up and down. So 16 would be about this big. So if I did a fade over here, just in case, you would see it slowly fades. And you can see that it's fading about 16 pixels. You can change that number and tighten it up, etc. You can see how it fades away. 16 is good for now. The problem is, what else is next to 16 pixels. Let's look at the bottom, the bottom of his shirt. So what you need to do is select this bottom area and pull it down. So that way, no matter what 16 pixels, 24, etc., it never touches the base of the video reference. Pull out the sides just in case, unless you have video noise over there too, and you're ready to start. And of course, if you do that, it's better, but now you have to move this down a little bit. Now don't move it too much, depending on what you shot, your footage. Because if you do, you can click out and just click one point. If you do, you're going to cut his hand if it dances around or does something. So that's a good beginning. Now what do we do? Now, that's, that's a start. What we want to do now is take the audio off because we're just doing video. And then click on here and press Control-D to duplicate. Now we have two layers of the same thing. On the other layer, we want to take this Primat Studio off by pressing Delete on effects controls. We have the original footage now. So now we have one layer. Now we have one layer of Pete. And we have one layer of the green screen. Now that's not a very good version, but you know, it's an idea. So we can go back to here, click on here, the tools pop up, clean the foreground a little bit. See how it constantly does this kind of back and forth? You have to make a decision about what's the most important part. Now, see down here, we can also move that. So let's let's do that. Let's click out of this, not use that, and click down on this. Hold the shift key down, go so go straight down. You'll notice all your points are gone. So we've got Pete. 
we have the original paint where we have to take these colors and paint in Photoshop later. And let's save this project. Let's call it, actually, let's not save this one yet. That's one little area of him pulling on his chin. So let's make a new project out of this. And we can move this over. Stickers base active. I'm gonna, I'm gonna duplicate that, Control D, and double click on it. That's the same project we were just working on. But now, I want to find and select just him doing that. So let's take a look. Let's zoom in a little bit more because there's 60 seconds of footage here. So there's him going like that. Hmm. All right. So pull back to the beginning. Starts about right here, let's say. Okay. Move this across. That's the active area. Hold the shift key down so it magnetically locks. Now move all the way to here. Hmm. Hmm. We don't need all that. Actually, we can use that, but we can't use it at the timing that he did. So he kind of moves over a little bit. We can use that, I guess. All right. So at the end, zoom out and there's 1800 frames to choose from. So that's a lot. And we zoom back in. Now, to just use just that area, this is the zoom out tool for After Effects for the timeline. Press Control Shift X for just that area to be chopped. Now we have just that. So let's go up here and rename it. Hmm. Now we can save our project. And then we can call it Hmm. We can do a lot of nested things, but this is just an example. So what I want now is to manually go across and pick maybe 10 to 12, because we're going to have to do 12 forward and 12 back. So let's do 12. Composition, save frame as Photoshop layers. What that's going to do is it's going to give us this layer, this layer, and the green layer in Photoshop to play with, which we'll need later on. So composition, save frame as Photoshop layers. We're doing this manually. So in here I put stickers and I'll do another one and I'll call this new folder. Hmm. Inside of there, I'll just call this H O one, because if we get past 10, we want these numbers to stay in place. H O one done. Now let's look in Photoshop. What happened in Photoshop? I open up H O one. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's go to the projects. Motion graphics, Giphy stickers, stickers, surfer. We put it in the wrong place. Okay. Let's see. Let's go back to here. All right, so let's go take a look in Photoshop where that went. I'm going to open it up. I have two different folders, so it's a little mix up there, but motion graphics, give me stickers. I put stickers here, but in After Effects, I put this thing, thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this back to the main folder. It'll be a little easier to see what's going on. All right, so give me stickers, stickers, circle, dance, hmm, strength and time. So let's go to what we're working on. Hmm. Here's that layer. Uh, pardon me. Here's that file. Inside of that file, look at that nice 16 pixel gradient. Isn't that cool? All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here, these layers. We have the background. We have what the plugin could do for alpha keying, which is pretty good. Not great, but it's pretty good. And then we have the actual color itself. And if I move this out of the way, you'll notice. Now, what's going over here on the side in Photoshop? These eyeballs mean take a look. So it's like panes of glass, one on top of the other. I'll show you what that means. If you don't, if you click on the picture or the words, it'll select the layer. So now let's go over here and use this tool that moves things. 
if I move my mouse on top of the pixels of the person, not the green, I can move. Now, everything's registered, so it'll look like an animation, so don't move it. I'm just explaining to you. Next layer. Eyeball on and then layer. So, what we're trying to do now is figure out a way to take some of these colors off the original picture and zoom in a little bit and maybe fix the nose. Next time it'll be part of a shirt. It's different each time. So what we're going to do is use alpha channels, just like we did in After Effects. What I want to do is turn on this. This is the white layer, or what I would call the full color layer. I want to go all the way to the bottom of the screen in the layers options. And there's a black, white circle with a uh, rectangle with a black circle on it. Add layer mask. That's created this white thing that's linked to the color version of P, and it's white. White means show. Black means hide. So if I went to here and I filled it in by clicking this flip flopper to get the thing on top, that's the color chooser on top. All right. So now I'm using black. I'm using the paint bucket right there. You hold down to find it. Now, if I paint it not on Pete, all right, I'm not trying to paint on Pete's face. I'm not trying to paint on the background, nor am I trying to paint on his shirt. That's the color layer. I'm trying to go to the alpha channel that's different and click all this white. That's right here. You can't see it that well, but it's there. Now watch this. Wait a second. Why is that green? Because it says don't show anything what's below this. See? Okay, so why did I do that? Because now if I paint on the black, the color white with a paintbrush, watch this. I'll make a big paintbrush to show you an example. Make a really big one, okay? Opacity 100%. See that? Why is there a white dot? I am revealing the layer on top, only in the area that I paint. Large thumbnails. I right clicked in this layer area to do that for you. See, that's saying, hey, you see where that's white? This guy's painting white. I wanna see this, but only that. So let's take all that and delete it. And let's go back. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Fix the nose. A little bit on the brow, if you look. Right here. And a little bit here. Where else? The side of the neck. And then anywhere in the shirt, we're in luck for this one. But it's a whole mess on the sides, okay? So let's go back to this layer now. And I'm going to turn this layer off to show you what's going on. Still looks the same, except now when I turn this on and off, that nose turns the proper color because we've added the color from that layer. Now let's turn this off. Now it's all green. Control zero, so I can see what I'm doing. And control minus one more time to zoom in and out. Now I'm going to look at this layer. Now I don't want to mess up the original colors that have been keyed and all this cool stuff, but I do want to make on this layer another alpha channel. Now if I do that, it's white. That means show, right? But we want to show all of this. And we're hiding this layer. We're not messing with this layer. Okay? Now we're going to go back to not the color part and screw it up by painting on it, right? But... We're going to go to the alpha channel to not mess up the original clear version and just paint white and black to get rid of all the mistakes on the side. So if this is white and black means hide in an alpha channel, right? Select here and flip flop the colors, or you can just click here and find something all the way at the corner, either corner, as long as there's no red, green, or blue. And these numbers are all at zero. It's hexadecimal and say, okay, watch what this does now with a black paint to hide certain areas that are already transparent on this. See, look at that. Now, if you accidentally have this for artistic reasons down to like 47%, you'll notice you have to do this a few times. And it's not 100% additive because right now I have it on smoothing 20%. It makes it artistic. There's a nice flow to it. It's a little robotic if you have smoothing at zero. 
If you have a slower computer, you might want to just turn smoothing off. So here we go. That's looking pretty good so far. Now, how can we speed this up? This kind of, it's pretty slow. Photoshop has a really cool feature right here called the Quick Selection Tool. And you can learn more about it by practicing. But if I go back to the color area and I select Inside Pete, it'll do a pretty good job of missing the rest of that stuff of him. But still, it's not a job that's made for a mouse. I can even go like this, select, select a mask. And it shows me with some of these cool things here, like a radius of blurring and a smart radius. And then you can play around the smoothing of it. So it's kind of like cartoony on the edge. Now that's one way to do it. Now you have that selected area. So what do we want to do? That's selected for the colors. We're not really doing anything with this, right? So let's go back to paint and take a look what I did. See? So intelligently, it does a pretty good job, but not perfect for the edges. So if I deselect, you can see that it's kind of messed up on the sides. It doesn't do a perfect job, but it's better than having to manually do it if all you have is a mouse. So I'm gonna undo this and I am going to undo the paint that I did. And now I'm gonna to go to the alpha channel. Now, if I paint black, it hides, right? Well, that's perfect. There's only one problem. We need the other side and paint black on it. So what if we did select invert, or in this case, inverse? Now, it's masking everything but Pete. So if we go to this area, which is a big pain in the butt, look. It's auto doing it, and it saves tons of hours for a person who just has a mouse. Again, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So let's take a look if I let go and press Control D to deselect. Not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. Let's take a look if we change this green and drag it down to the plus symbol with a box here, which creates another layer of exactly whatever it is. Let's take that green and fill it with black. So let's click on the white and black icons here and then click on the paint bucket. And the reason I'm using black, because it really reveals a lot if there's black underneath. Well, that looks pretty good, but that's gonna be like most of the people who do Giphy's. There's gonna be this white edge because they don't do a very good job. Plus the way it was lit and things are reflecting on it, there's so many reasons. But if you have a drawing tablet, you can really take care of that problem. Now I'm gonna try this with my drawing tablet. So here we go. I can reduce the size a little bit here. The brush size down, down, down. I mean, usually I do it about four pixels, three or four pixels. So if I just type in four, now I'm going to paint black. I'm going to make sure that there's most hardness. There's a little bit of blur on the side, not too much. Now, if I go over here and take a look at the alpha channel, you can see part of the head's covered. We worked on that. But if I go into the neck itself and the shoulders, watch this. It's a lot of work. I'm painting, not the color black, but I'm saying don't look at those pixels. Now the paintbrush inside of a tablet has this kind of artistic-y back and forth kind of a thing. And the neat thing is if you make a mistake and go too far, you can flip-flop this, right? With the letter I. Or in this case, the letter X, not the letter I. See how the letter X flip-flops the color from foreground to background? So now I'm going to use white to reveal part of the face of the mistake I made. You can do that with a mouse too. Got to do it a couple times. There we go. Go back with X. Really take care of that ear. And it goes smooth. Sometimes you got to go back and forth after you've rendered it as an animation because you can't tell when it's still. See how that's working? It's nice. But it really takes a long time and a smooth hand, even with a really, really nice pen system, like a tablet, $60 for a knockoff from China or a Wacom for like two, $300.
So let's look at the difference between that and the other side. You can already see it. So let's go back to zero, control zero, and then control minus. There's a huge difference between this side and what you normally see in most people's Giphys. So let's zoom up a little bit with the uh, brush size. You can again do that up here, just manually move that. Now I can paint away what I see. It's a lot easier than a mouse, but a mouse can do it. And that trapping that I showed you can help a lot too. So there you go. That looks pretty good. Now let's open this back up. Now you see the color itself, the original color. Let's really get into that beard. And for now, let's just show the green background. Looks perfect. Now you'll notice if I move this back and forth, depending on the compression on YouTube, that there's a little bit of something going on there still. So let's shrink that down and clean off that compression. There's a great way to see what's left over of what you forgot to. Watch this. So I think I got it. Let's pretend this doesn't exist, that side, right? Let's say, let's say I got all this, or most of it I thought I did, and it's still here, but I didn't know. Watch this. If I take this layer, either side, and I go down to an effects in Photoshop, and I do stroke or outer glow, watch what stroke does. I gave a red stroke around the edge of whatever this is supposed to be. See? It shows you the areas that are still there that you can't quite see by eye. So if I do maybe two pixels, now I know that it's stroking around the edge of colors or transparency, because if I close this, you'll, you'll really see what I'm doing, right? Okay. So let's go back to this transparency side. And now let's use black, like we're supposed to, to hide things. Now it'll interactively get rid of all the stuff I missed. So you got to do it a couple times with the tablet because it has that smoothing on. If I took the smoothing off, it would be just instant removal. But I like the smoothing on. It really gives a better feel. A mouse, forget it. There's no big deal. This would almost instantly come off. Like I'll use my mouse as an example. See? The mouse gets it immediately and removes the rest of that area. You can go really, really big as long as you don't touch the face or the body of what you're trying to illustrate. So there's a lot of steps. Now, if you look on, there we go. There we are. Some things you'll never see that are here on the side. That's also just the video noise from the, the sensor and the video compression that is used by the phone. You're not going to go out and buy a $4,000 camera to do this if you're doing it for fun, but that's how special effects are done. They try to keep using the most uncompressed, clean video with the least amount of um, storage compression. So I don't want to do too much here because I can't see what I'm doing. So let's turn off that effect with the eyeball. Stroke off. And now show the black background. Now it's still more apparent, obviously. Now I'm going to shrink down here. Let me get about that small. And I'm going to do all this. So you can see after a while, it's just like, whoa, it's a lot of work. Imagine with a mouse how long that would take. You see that white edge. So you don't want to go too far in and do that. But you really do want to keep lightly pressing every single stroke to get a nice organic edge. Like maybe the light didn't hit the edge as much. That's what we're trying to emulate when we're doing this type of alpha channel. Same thing up here. All right. This obviously is going to take forever and ever and ever. Now let's get to that beard. Now a beard kind of like fades as it goes around in this case. But our Giphy doesn't have to be that exact. Giphy uh, sticker, I should say. So we get to the edge. Think about the way a shirt curls around the side of a shirt, uh, a neck. 
Now let's select this. I did a little too much there, so I'm pressing X and X again to change the colors to go back and forth. Now I'm going to lightly feather, like it's a beard, into the beard itself. And you can get rid of a little bit of the beard, just don't lose the shape. And then remember to get rid of some of the leftovers. It's a process. You learn how to do it over time. You keep feathering and feathering and feathering. And then you got yourself a nice little change over there. So there's one. And you can see this edge. Got to go up here. Not too much. But it's a start. There we go. Oops. I press Control Z to get rid of that mistake. So when your left hand is on Control Z and you can press X to change your color from white to black, you can get a lot done. All right, that looks good for now. A little bit of the beard needs to maybe, you have to think about the geometry of the face and how things hit. And don't go too far in because the edge of the earlobe goes down, but whatever makes it look realistic in the end. Press X again, pull some of that beard back. I mean, eventually you could, for a perfectionist, you can go in after you've done this and paint new beard on top and paint the edges a certain color so it doesn't the colors don't fall off and everything. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of this. That gets into the geometry of the shape and that's more like TV and film special effects level. This is just a Giphy um, sticker. But hey, might as well do it the best you can, right? Look at that. Beautiful. Now, the black is a little more revealing, sometimes white background, than the green. But you can get away with just using the green. You didn't really have to use the black to see what you're doing. And remember, I'm not painting black. I just have a black background that I created on this list up here. And I could use the green instead, or nothing, a transparency kind of thing. You can sort of see it here, but that checkerboard starts to get confusing. So that's why I just did another layer. Now, at any time while you're working, if you get tired, you can just press Control S or Save. And that's the beauty of this, is that this is a Photoshop document. You can go back later and work on it more and more and more until you feel it's finished. Now, look at that. That is the wall behind the shirt. So let's go in here and let's paint that in as a black. I think we're going to get, but not too much. It's hard to see. This is where green comes in hand, because if you see green in the background, that helps you really see what's going on a little bit. You know, then you could press X, maybe white and follow the shape of the jacket. That way it artistically looks even better. Back and forth, back and forth, X and X. Now let's take a look. That's eh, not bad. It's not perfect. You see some of the mistakes there on the side. I can get rid of some of that. I can do that here too. Just a little bit. But then again, it just, it gets a little lost. So showing that green layer behind really helps us see what's going on. So it's getting there. It's not quite there, but it's getting there. You can see the areas I didn't do very well. This takes a very, it takes like 20, 30 minutes for each one to get perfect. You could always work smaller, resize everything before you start to play with this. But anyway, let's finish this. This is done for now. I don't want to do the rest of that edge. I just want, you can go in there forever and just paint, 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 paint. Now let's save what we're doing. We've been working on, but let's do something else. Let's hide the green. Now we know it's transparent. Now these helpers are there. They come from Adobe After Effects. Let's press Control H and hide them. Now let's go to File, Export as a PNG. Now we can put that in here. Now in Strength, I did the same kind of thing or a circle dance. You can put it in the same folder. So let's call it ho1.png and let's save that. Let's take a look at what happened. Let's bring that in over here. And we'll go to the stickers. Hmm. Here's ho1.png. And I'll bring that over to show you. 
That's not a white background. It just happens to display PNGs with a white background. Just like when I was doing the website example, the CSS of the cascading style sheets, I can show you in the source itself. Let's see if I can get here to the side. There you go. So there's these div classes I did. So if I go to the CSS, I just said background color for one is black, white, and hexadecimal RGB. So that's a green background. RGB is even, even, even. So that's gray. See, gray, green, white, black. I could always just inspect the element itself, the green one, and then take a look at the CSS itself for that area, boom, and then change the background from green to red, no green, no blue. See, see how it changes? Or no red, no green, all blue. That's just an editor inside of uh, Firefox or Chrome. And that's cascading style sheets. That's what a finish would look like when every single frame is right. So now let's go back in. That's our one frame. Now, if we went into After Effects, what we'd have to do for now is just take each one of these real quick. I'm just going to load these into uh, Photoshop. I have, hmm, I've only done one, right? But let's finish that. Let's go back and go to After Effects. Now we've got the first pose, and we need about 12. Now, it takes them a while to get up there and do that. We don't want to use too many frames of that and go to the bottom. That's our end frame, okay? <laughs> so we want to go to Composition. Again, save frame as Photoshop Layers. We can play with, along with that later. Now we put it into the folder that we were working on. Projects, Motion Graphics, Giphy Stickers, Stickers. Hmm. And we'll call this, I don't know, for instance, H12. So I have to do 11 others in between. We should probably not do, probably not do it this way, but I'm, that's my ending. Okay. And if we look here, we now have the beginning and the ending. It looks a little different because when I save this, I've been working on it. It should look like that on the initial. So let's do this. Let's go in. Hmm. From here. That's a good position right there. All right. The hand's a little blurry, but it's okay. That has to deal with the exposure time on the sensor on the camera, the shutter speed, the angle. But forget all that for now. That was just somebody with a phone camera. So H02. Save that. Maybe up here, right before. And this, it's not even. Some animations, people move their hands faster or slower. You have to understand and start to play with the concept of animation. So timing. And that's like traditional Bugs Bunny drawings, etc. Three, four might be good there. Photoshop layers, H04. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Composition, save frame as. Oops, let's try that again. Composition, oh gosh. <laughs> Composition, save frame as Photoshop layers. It'd be nice if there was a shortcut key. You can set that up, but I didn't feel like doing it. H05. H O let's see. Hmm. H06. Right there is good. There we go. And H07. That's really just him. There we go. Seven. There we go. H08. Nine, ten, eleven, right? We got three more to go. Nine. So, nine. Hand maybe here. Think about it when you got to Fix this. The least amount of blur is the best. That's going to be hard to alpha channel, but it is what it is. All right. 
page 10. One more. Not much going on besides that lip going down. You know, I think if I outboard this H11, let's say, we don't need that 12th frame. So let's get, and that would save time, believe me. So there we go. Let's get rid of 12 into the trash and take 2 to 11 and bring them into Photoshop. You see, look at that. Pretty cool, right? A lot of steps. So let's go to 11 and hide the finished color and finish the green, hide the green. And now we can shortcut key. Instead of doing all this stuff, we can export as a PNG. But let's do this. Let's export for legacy. Alt Shift Control S. We can do that. Alt Shift Control S. It's different on the Mac, but same idea. PNG 24 transparency. Make sure that transparency is on. Save it. It's going to ask you for the place because when you export, it doesn't remember the first time. Motion graphics, Giphy, stickers, hmm, there we go, H11, ta-da. Now we go to H02, same thing, get rid of the color and the alpha, just the first thing that the plugin did for Keen. Control Shift S and just save it again as a 24 let it auto name because we've already named the pngs uh the psds properly ho3 hide the green screen hide the color do that again here we go ho3 i know it's kind of drudging but see while i'm talking to you i forgot to actually turn those layers off so let me turn those off again Control shift s there we go. Now, after doing this, all this work, <laughs> it might actually feel like a simple step to buy a $40 green screen. There we go. Now, remember, none of these have been touched up, and it takes hours to finish this. There we go. I'm just going through the shortcut keys that I did earlier. Opening up the layer, turning off the green, the color, keeping what was alpha in the plugin. We're almost there. Uh, turn off the green, turn off the layer of the color, and save it. There we go. Do this. See, I keep forgetting to do that. It's getting late. There we are. All right, so. Oops. All right. Don't want to save it. Don't want to save it. I basically just want to close all these. So that's Control W. And it goes to the next layer. We haven't done anything. We just wanted to export to show an example. Yes, we want to save this, and the black isn't necessary, but we're going to keep it there anyway. So let's take a look. Minimize that. And there, what do you know? So in this operating system, if you right click and go to group by type, it could help you organize these. Zero, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I didn't get eight. So where's eight? Huh? <laughs> there is not an eight because I was tired. Simple. Just do this. Go backwards. 7, 9, 10, 11. So 7, 9. Call this 8. This is great. We just saved two frames, if you think about it. We didn't use 12. Oh, 09. So I'm just sliding the ones that I had to rename. All right, so 7, 8. Nine, ten. Okay, so now they're in order. And if we do Control Shift One, they're big. Two, three, four, five, six. Control Shift held down to not let go. It shows us different sizes. It's interesting. Press F5. Should fix them. 
Yeah, little bugs everywhere. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to open up After Effects. Now I'm going to make a new composition, right? A new project, I should say. Uh, Yeah, I guess we could save this. It doesn't matter. Whatever. So a new composition from footage. That footage is going to be the stuff that we just exported from Photoshop. Projects, Motion Graphics, Giphy, Stickers. Hmm. Now, right click, sort by type, right click, group by type. Yes, we did that in the other window, but that's the other Explorer window. Each one memorizes something different. So, H01, the PNG sequence right here. See that? It'll import all those if they're numerically in order. Ta da! Now, look at that. Now, how many frames per second do we want this to be? I don't know. Let's go here to composition settings. Right now we have it at 30 frames a second. Let's do, I don't know, 12, one 1,000, okay? And let's preview at 12 frames a second. Over here in the preview area, we can highlight and type. Even though it's not there, you can still type it in. So let's shrink this a little tiny bit. Here's our timeline that we have. Hmm. Let me go back. Now you notice now there's only there's three, four frames. It's missing some of the stuff because we created a composition. So let's just delete that. Delete this. And click on here and go to properties of this. Uh, interpret footage main. It doesn't really matter. It's just a good way to preview. You know what? I'm not going to complicate that for you. I'm just going to create a new comp from selection and show you this. And we're just going to play it back at eight frames, 12 frames a second. Okay. Now you can either go over here and press play. If you don't know where this is, it might be in here somewhere. So there you go. Look at that. Hmm. Luckily his hand goes to the bottom. Otherwise you'd have to repeat the frames to go back and forth. So that's only 12 frames. It's not going to be that big. But now can you see all the background noise and all the problems? Another way to do that is to right click, make a new solid like we did before. Make it green, for instance. Put that layer by dragging it underneath. And you still see a little bit of mistakes. Now you can save this project and call it hmm. Let's call it hmm, gif out. And we can use this to go back and forth to Photoshop and fix those areas over and over and over. And every time you change something and fix it, you can then go to here and right click and reload the footage and fix the little sprinkles that you see by going back and forth. So you can work on one here while you're working on after Effects over here. If you have two monitors, that's even better, but if you don't, it is what it is. I would just work this way if I were you, like this, going back and forth this way. So hours and hours and hours and hours and hours later, that would be your finished product. So let's look. Frame zero, frame one, two, three. But we started at 01, 02, 03, 02. Let's go back to Photoshop. And let's open up ho2.psd. Let's do what we did before. Let's look at the color off and just what the program did in its own kind of masking. Let's alpha channel. And remember, painting black hides. So let's paint very, very big at first, 81 pixels. I'm not erasing. I'm just painting black on the channel. So it never messes up the original design. Now, if you make a mistake, you might accidentally paint black on the actual layer itself. So it's always good to memorize and learn a little bit about alpha, alpha channels before you go too deep here. So let's go back. I'm going to use my tablet, but you can use a mouse. A lot of times when you're working, you might accidentally do this. Oh no. Just go up to the top, edit. Undo brush tool, control Z, 
on a PC. Mac is option or Mac. So press Control Z and it has a memory. It'll memorize like 10 or 20 times what you're doing. There's a setting in Photoshop for that. See how we're doing that? Let's really get down here. That's the, the real pain in the butt right there. Now again, we could just paint this and get a little too close and mess up on this lapel and stuff like that. Or we could go back to the color layer right there, clicking on the color, clicking on this funky thing right here that does tracing. Quick selection tool and going up to the edge and it sees light and dark and does a pretty good job. Then you can go to select, select a mask. It'll help you work on that a little bit. The radius, you don't want to go too crazy. It messes up the whole thing, as you can see. Smart radius, not too much. Smooth it out, or don't smooth it out too much. That helps a person without a mouse. I mean, without a tablet. And the feather is just like we did in After Effects with a mask, but you don't want that. And you could do a little tiny bit, but not too much. I wouldn't do much if I were you. Now we're there. Problem is, now if we're on the, go back to the alpha channel, all right, what are we doing? We're doing a selection. You gotta go back to your paintbrush. Now you can paint. Oh no, it's on the wrong side. That's not a problem. Go to select, inverse, and now you're painting that problem area that was a shadow on the white wall. got to do it a couple times with the tablet because there's pressure sensitivity the mouse you wouldn't have to do that let's control d to deselect and see what it did it's okay it looks a little gumpy but uh you know i would probably go back down and press x as you see it changes the color chip selection and then paint that back in just so it looks nice and then x again to get the other side here i would i might go in to to define the edge of that jacket a little tiny bit, even if it wasn't really like that, to make it look fun and artsy. And here, obviously, I would, you know, really have to go back and forth and look at the After Effects to see what I did that's not right. and Kind of maybe clean that up a little bit. And go back. And maybe create something that isn't there before, but do what I can. So on a mouse, this would be just horrible. And here it's a little jaggedy because the algorithm didn't do a great job of selecting or did it as best as it could, to be honest. So I'm just going to do this to show you a little bit. Now we're going to save this PSD, Control-S, and we're also going to hide that layer. We're not going to mess with the color for right now because not too much is missing. But we're going to now save this for the web, export again for legacy. And you can see the transparency because we remember transparency. PNG 24. You can pull this out if you get a little confused about what's going on. And save. Now you're going to save on top of the one you already did. It's already there. It's going to say, hey, are you sure? Yes, replace it. Now let's go back into After Effects. And sure enough, if we reload the footage, all that's going to be fixed. Right click. Reload footage. See? All of it's fixed. It does look a little... Gumpy, like I said, and it's better to, to get in there and like do it by hand. But by moving the green layer, you can see that it's pretty good. Still a lot of work to do. And you can see more easily, you can also see the missing part of the face and the eyes because they have white in them. And you can press Control-Z to get that back. I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to go back into Photoshop. And remember, if you do this layer, and then you go to Effects, Stroke, make it like two pixels in red or whatever color you want, it'll really show you the parts that you can't see that aren't, that haven't been cleaned up enough. And the, uh, you can go back to the black, the black and white for the alpha channel, and paint that sucker in. And maybe get really big to save time. The tablet's going to go slow, and you have to do a couple strokes. A mouse at 100% will do a pretty good job. So it's a good mixture of both if you do have a tablet, if you're lucky enough to have one. If you don't, then, you know, it's not the end of the world. Now, you don't want to do it this way 
all the time because there's no finesse to the edge of the model. So it starts to look real gumpy as well. So let's take that effect off. Save the project, Control S. Control Alt Shift S to export again, the transparent version. Let's see if it does a better job. It's a little weird on the edge of that beard. A little too, that circle is a little too big. Let's take a look. Let's right click and reload footage. A lot of it's gone. So that's over and over and over. And then when this is all done, you can turn this off, you just have this, and then you can go to composition and you can export this as a GIF. You can add to render queue, then you can go here and you could do it as a GIF. But notice in here in the custom, right? If you go down here, you go like, wait a second, where's the GIF? Well, for some reason, they took it out of here and you have to use another program to take that out. So let's take this out here. And instead of the render queue, let's go up to the top composition, add to media encoder queue. Now I have to wait for this to load and I'll pause the video. All right, so that loaded up. Now it's gonna go into the temporary area where it stores all this information of the After Effects project. So, here it is. I already have it at that, but you know, you click on here, you look for GIF, then you get a GIF sequence right there. You can click on it and take a look. It seems a little convoluted to do this, but it's one of the only ways to get it right. Weird thing is I have a program that does GIFs and it doesn't do a good edge to it. So there you go. Use maximum render quality, blah, blah, blah. So we can do it this way. We can also bring them all into Photoshop, which is another way to do it. So for right now, we've got video, we've got some transparency, and we can kind of scoot through and take a look. Obviously, there's mistakes, but there we go. Now we have that. And let's output that to a test, just a test. Giphy stickers, stickers, hmm. Hmm, dash test dot gif. And render it. All right, what that does is, it unfortunately <laughs> gives you the sequence of gifs which you don't need. So, again, there is a way to do it, but it's not the best way to do it through here. There's a way to change that so it goes into a, a form sequence, but that's, I'm just doing this to show you what's going on. Take a good look and the mistakes and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this. I'm gonna hide this timeline and I'm gonna pretend I didn't have that. So I'm gonna to go to automate, right? And I go down to scripts, one more. Load files into stack, all right? So let's find them. Here they are. And now we're gonna say, okay. Takes a little bit of time. So now it's loading all the different layers and place them one on top of each other inside of a new project in Photoshop. And the nice thing is all registered because we made sure it stayed all in place when we worked. Well, there we go. They're all together, one to 10, see? I could do all of them. So now let's do something else, window, timeline, create frame animation, boom. And now go to this area and say, make frames from layers that we have up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Any delay, blah, 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 we could do all that. Let's press play and see what it does. Hmm. 
there's our finished GIF. Now this is great. There's only one problem with this whole process. It's a little wide, a little big, and we're wasting a lot of space. And it's not square, which is really great for stickers. So there we go, we're finished. Let's now save this. Save this as a GIF. We can save as a PSD too. Let's call it GIF uh, hmm, wider test. Okay. Now it saves all those layers. It's a huge waste of space. But let's go here. Export as a GIF. Now, when we're exporting as a GIF, there's a lot of things that it's going to miss that we really shouldn't uh, deal with. So let's cancel this boom, and go to File, Save As, as a GIF, Ta-da! and we're going to save it. Now, palette, let's do local perceptual, colors 256 fine, forest none, Transparency, yes. Matte, none. Dither, diffusion. Pattern, noise, you'll play around with that later. Diffusion's nice. Amount, 75%, how much it went you wanted to diffuse. And say okay. Takes a second or two. Should be done. Now let's open it up and take a look. Let's go back here. There's my green screen puppets as an example. But here we go. Give me stickers, stickers, hmm. There we go, wider test. And we can open up the GIF in a browser. Let's do that. We could open up in a browser. Boom. Let's just open up another tab in Firefox, bring it over as another page, and just drop in the GIF. Well, there you go. Looks pretty good, but we're not noticing that the white will really show up with black. And there's still that going on in the other frames. So that's basically the step. The CSS is something completely different. But if I did that, I would take, let's rename that. Hmm, wider test. Let's copy it, put it inside of a web host or a page. I put that. I put that in my HD docs and I'll do stickers here. And I've got another one here, I'm gonna paste this in. Hmm, wider test. And I'm gonna take strength and copy and paste. And I'll call it hmm with all the code I already did. Now inside of hmm, I'm gonna open it up and just simply change this value. Another good thing to do is maybe this. Let's see. Uh, GIF equals new variable in PHP, and we'll take this. This whole thing here and paste it in right and then replace find this find it and replace it maybe with php echo gif variable in php so now you can sh you can test a lot of different things and it's going to replace it all there, a lot less typing. Let me save it. Let's see if that does anything good here. Bring this down. And go to my local host and go to uh, stickers. And hmm, that PHP. What do you know? There it is. The reason that it resizes like that is because my PHP is relative, 100% for the size. The other ones are just actual pixels below, but the other one's 50% of whatever the screen size is. So it's not bad. You can tell a lot of mistakes in the black, the way it was lit. Uh, the white's perfect, but remember these GIF stickers were gonna go on a lot of different things. And usually it's gonna be white when people talk, sometimes it's black, but that's the edge that you got. And the edge goes away when you spend a lot of time and you fix it. So those are the steps. It's a lot of steps, but those are the steps on how to do this.